Now, the United States has by far the highest rate of gun homicides among the world's wealthy nations, according to healthdata.org. So, yes, we're an outlier. And we're also an outlier in police violence, specifically police killings of civilians, according to the Prison Policy Initiative. So it is worth asking if there is a connection, right, if our history of brutality toward an enslavement of millions of black Americans may be connected to our current culture of gun violence. And while there may be a connection, there are also contrasts, right, a phenomenon that civil rights lawyer Benjamin Crump calls the, quote, two Americas. So these are the two Americas, right? In one America, a 21-year-old white man, Robert Cremo III, the Highland Park shooting suspect, is arrested without incident. He is charged with shooting over 70 rounds, 70 rounds, from a rooftop into a July 4th parade crowd, killing seven. Now, in the other America, a black man, Jalen Walker, who was 25, just a few years older than Cremo, was killed by police in Akron, Ohio, exactly one week before the Highland Park July 4th massacre. Body cam video released by police, which I do want to warn you is disturbing as you're watching, shows officers firing loads and loads of bullets at Walker as he fled. Police said officers had pursued Walker for a traffic stop and that he discharged, that's what they say, that he discharged a firearm from his vehicle during the pursuit. So Walker, right, who was not accused of killing anyone, died in a hail of bullets. And then Robert Cremo III, who is suspected of murdering seven people and injuring dozens more, was apparently taken into police custody without incident. What I just laid out are those two Americans. And to talk about this is Benjamin Crump, who's joining us right now. Benjamin, thank you so much for being with us today. I want to start there. Now, I want to start with the image that we just laid out. No? Can you describe what these two Americas are? It's uh, unfortunately a reality that marginalized people of color know far too well mm -hmm. that what the situation is, what the dynamic is, the most of injustice and the least of justice, when it, whether George Floyd not being given the benefit of the doubt, the benefit of consideration, the benefit of uh, professionalism, and most importantly, the benefit of humanity, as the police officer kept their knee on his neck for nine minutes and 29 seconds. You look at the consideration given to young white men who are confirmed mass murderers. I mean, you think about not only this latest young man taken without incident who shot all those innocent people in the parade in Illinois, but you go a couple of weeks back to Buffalo, New York, where the young white man wrote a manifesto and said his objective was to kill as many black people as possible. He's taken alive. Parkland Shooter, he's taken alive. And Dylan Roof, the young white supremacist in Charleston, South Carolina, who killed some of the the most innocent people you could ever find. He said in the interview, I felt bad about killing these black people because they were so nice to me. Well, not only did they take them alive, but they took them to Burger King to get a burger and fries. Well, a black person who hasn't killed anybody, who's running away from the police, we are shot in the back over and over again. It's you shoot first and ask questions later. And Jalen Walker, my God, over six times? I think you, you, you said something that I think encapsulates everything really well, right? Black people, black and brown folks are not given the benefit of humanity. No, I think, I think that is a perfect way of articulating this. But you've been in this fight for, for many, many years. I've seen you on the screen talking about this exact story time and time again. What changes in the system do we really need in order to, to have some form of accountability in this country? Well, I think it starts with just that, holding these people accountable who engage in excessive use of force, who engage in brutality, who shoot first and ask questions later. It's this devaluing of black life where you can shoot first and know that there won't be any consequences. Nobody's going to jail. I mean, for decades, black people would say the police are brutalizing us. They are treating us excessively. And nobody would believe us. And now we have camera to show that it's happening. And if ever you wanted to see in vivid color the difference, you look at January 6th and the amount of restraint that the police officers used versus what they did with Jalen Walker or what they did with Terrence Crutcher or what they did with Laquan McDonald or what they did with, that, and the list goes on and on, Walter Scott. I mean, mm -hmm. some black men in the back is like a cliche in America. 
You know, Ben, we, we talk about here on TV the type of changes that should happen. You know, lawmakers talk about the changes that they want to see happen. But what does the community want to see, right? You're someone that's in touch with the community. You've been in touch with so many families, countless families throughout the country. What do they want to see? What we want is what everybody wants, accountability. We want equal justice. We're not asking for anything special. You want them to be held accountable criminally. You want civil uh, justice based on the Seventh Amendment that's promised to all Americans. And most importantly, what we want is change. We want policy. We want to try to prevent so many hashtags. The hashtags happen so quickly, we can barely keep up. Think about just this year. After George Floyd, we're on a record-breaking pace with police killings of black people in America. Ben, thank you so much for your work and for taking some time to be with us today. I really appreciate it.